Hi St. James family, Sarah here, stopping in to give you an update on some changes we're making here at St. James in light of the coronavirus pandemic. At this time, all Sunday services and all scheduled events are canceled through April the 5th, 2020. This includes our threefold communion service. We're gonna postpone that until a later time when we can gather together again safely. We're also going to limit our pastoral visits uh, to emergencies only at this time. In the meantime, our office is going to be open from 8 a.m. to 3.30, Monday through Friday, to continue to serve you and meet your needs. Please call the church and or email us and let us know with any ongoing needs and prayer requests you might have. Our phone number here at the church is 301-582-3333. And you can reach us through our office email, and that's office at sjbchurch.com. We're also going to be providing you with emails just like this so you can stay informed and provide you moments of encouragement. And we're also looking to provide uh, some music playlists so you guys can continue to worship uh, personally at home when it's convenient for you. I know we're living in a world that looks completely different than it did two weeks ago. Um, but as I was reading my devotional this morning in Joshua, one of my favorite verses again jumped off the page at me. It's Joshua 1.9, and it says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. In fact, in the passage leading up to uh, verse 9, God commands Joshua to be strong and courageous, not once, not twice, but three times. And the repetition really shows the importance of this command that Joshua, that Joshua is given from God. And as I was sharing with my Good News Club kids uh, just a little bit ago, courage is doing something with strength, even when it's scary. And we're living in a scary time, a time that's uncertain and unprecedented, but that doesn't mean that we can't go with courage and with strength because God is with us. I don't know about you, but for me, this passage brings me so much hope and comfort knowing that God is with me even when I'm not sure what's going to be happening tomorrow. I want to encourage you, friends, that even though we are practicing uh, social distancing for uh, our best health and for the health um, of those around us. Um, I want you to know that social distancing does not equal social disconnection. Pastor Jerry reminded us that the word crisis means opportunity. And I want to encourage you to use this time to seize it as an opportunity to reach out and to connect with your family, with your friends, with your neighbors, and with our fellow church members to check in on them, see how they're doing. Um, pray with them, ask them how you can help, and just stay connected. We have so many resources at our disposal, at our disposal, from phones to uh, the internet, emails. You can use messaging. You can uh, video chat with people through a variety of means. Use these resources at your disposal to connect with people and be the hands and feet of Jesus to your friends and your neighbors during this time. My hope and my prayer is that we utilize this time as the church and as St. James as a church um, to continue to minister to people in real and meaningful ways and that what the devil would use for evil that we turn as good for God. I pray that the message that Johnny brings next will bring encouragement and refreshment to your soul. Keep reaching out. We're praying for you and we love you and we'll speak with you soon. Bye. Well, good morning. Welcome. Greetings of love in the name of Jesus. I come to you today, today under unusual circumstances. We gather around our God in an unusual way understand this though we serve an uncommon God in an uncommon time so I got to tell this little story I had this sermon all planned out I had it titled all that kind of good stuff at four o'clock this morning God woke me up and put thoughts in my head so I just got up sat down on my computer and started typing 
and my title turned out to be who's in your boat or for whom are you willing to abandon your boat? And it comes from Matthew 8, verses 23 to 27, where Jesus and his disciples were on the stormy sea. Jesus was asleep, and the disciples were afraid, very afraid, because unusual things were happening. A major storm was going on. And then they suddenly realized who they had in their boat. And then just a half hour before I came here to speak this morning, I watched a message from the director of the Brethren Church. And his theme was, we're in a rapids, we're in a raft, and we're navigating this stormy water and he asked that question about and referenced Jesus in the boat. Folks, we serve an uncommon God in an uncommon time. But have faith. Because that's what it's going to be. I just want to take a few minutes to encourage us in this uncommon time. Because we're living life today very, very different than we did just two weeks ago. Last week, our government declared to what some may seem martial law. Our work has been restricted. Our assembly has been restricted. Things that many said would never happen happened. Fear gripped our country. People panicked and suddenly we see the true spirit of a person. In some cases it's been the worst of them. In other cases it's been the best. What's your experience? As a follower of Christ what's been your reaction? How do we act or react? Do we blindly believe everything we're told on the 24-hour news cycle? Do we ignore the experts and selfishly continue our life as if nothing has happened? The truth probably lies somewhere in between. Do we trust God or man? Today I challenge us to use this time wisely. This age, this moment we're living in, challenge us to put our money where our mouth is, so to speak. We say we're compassionate. Now's the time to show it. We say we have faith. Now's the time to prove it. We say we believe in a God that controls all things. Now's the time to act like it. Don't be anxious for anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, present your requests to God. Philippians 4, verse 6. Our government has banned assembly. Our God is, but our God has promised where two or three is gathered together. There I am with you. Matthew 18, 20. Our government demands we shut everything down or suffer greatly in the future. Our God says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 6, 34. Our government says, trust us, we'll save you. Our God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. Or as in Jeremiah 17, 7, it says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose confidence is in him. Psalms 37, 5 says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. Matthew 6, 33, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, 
And all these things will be given to you as well. So with all this going on in our present world, and all the news agencies broadcasting different messages, and all the social media content being scare tactics, and the sky is falling mentality, my attention is drawn to the scriptures. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 through 27 says this. Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Or today, you would say, Lord, save us. We're going to die with the plague. He replied, you have little faith. Why are you so afraid? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. The true savior of mankind was in their boat. He's in ours today. We got rough waters, but he's in our boat. The one who can not only save our earthly lives, but can also save our eternal souls, is in our boat. The disciples turned to him for help, and his response, his reply, according to verse 26, was, You have little faith. Why are you so afraid? So I asked, Who do you have in your boat? Jesus, the Savior of our souls? Or the government who many times has selfish ambitions. Now, by no way, shape, or form I, am I advocating we don't listen to our government. They're here for our good. And heeding their warning is going to save lots of people. But don't let it overcome you. Don't let it stir up our souls to the most, to the point of being stressed, because we got Jesus in our boat. Philippians 4 verse 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God will transcend all understanding. Will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air, they don't sow or reap, or store away in bottoms yet. Guess what? They have everything to eat because their father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying at a single hour to your life? Romans 8 verse 31 says, what shall we then say to these things? If God before us, who can be against us? He's in our boat. Prior to the present day paranoia over a new version of an old disease, my original attempt for a sermon was based upon a question that arose in our pastoral search committee meeting, which said, how brethren are we? Or how are we brethren? And in his book titled, A Brethren Witness for the 21st Century, the late Dr. Reverend Brian H. Moore has a chapter titled, A Voice in the Wilderness of Confusion. I ask this, are we being a voice of reason in the wilderness of confusion? Within this context, I have written here Reverend Moore, I just have to say Brian, because I knew him as Brian. Encourage the church itself, the believers to be engaged together in seeking the truth. We are quote, we are a community that seeks after the truth and practices what we learn. 
No one person is the authoritative voice. The truth is arrived at by studying the scriptures, group discussions, and consent. Where should we search and what shall be our basis for that discussion? And for this, we've turned to the scriptures. In the scriptures, we find the express will of God for his people. While we use the whole of the Bible for our truth, we're especially fond of the New Testament because in it is the direct recordings of the works and words of God himself through his son, Jesus, as he lived here on earth amongst us. We, the people of God and the Brethren Church, profess and proclaim we're a people of faith. We believe we serve an all-powerful God. We believe that he alone is all we need. So I ask this question. Will a people of faith hoard toilet paper out of fear and emotional paranoia? Or will we give away the last role we have to someone who has none? Because we believe that our God will supply all our needs. Do we put our money where our mouth is, so to speak? Do we walk the talk? when the walking gets tough. As I mentioned before, Matthew 6, 25 to 27 exhorts us not to worry. Then again, from verse 28, we read, and why do we worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. So that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or how much toilet paper do I need? The pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I know for a fact there's some farmers amongst us who are asking the question, well, what's different? We're always ready. Our freezer's full. We've got a garden. Our pantry's stocked. All is well. Many of us are about to plant a garden. And we'll soon be eating from the fruits of the vine and the stalk or the root. Some of us welcome social isolation. Being alone with nature is a welcome change from the rat race of society. Use it as an opportunity to refresh yourself. Now, if we just leave the electronic devices turned off, the social media behind us, and concentrate instead upon that which is spoken and created by God, instead of what is manufactured by man, we'll find peace. John chapter 14, verse 1 says, Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And again in verse 7, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Hebrews 6, verse 19, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. In a world without hope, let's bring forth our hope. Go out to all the world and let your light so shine among men that they too may have that hope. We see the panic from those who have no hope. We see the uncertainty from those who feel they have no control. We see those who are drunk with power trying to use this disease as a grab for more power. But do not fear, for we serve the all-powerful God. The one who has the real control, the one who created the world, and the one who one day will destroy it. He's in control. He has a plan, not only for the world, but for each one of our lives. In Matthew 14, 23 to, 22 to 33, after Jesus had just fed the 5,000 people with five measly loaves and two little fishes, we read this. And immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, what did he do? He went up on a mountainside and prayed himself. Later that night, he was there alone. 
and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the wave because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost! It's a disease! It's going to kill us! And then they realized it was Jesus. They cried out, it's a ghost. And Jesus immediately said, take hey, courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come on to the water. And Jesus said, come on. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. And as long as Peter kept his eye on Jesus, he was successful. The moment, verse 30 says, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why do you doubt? We're human. We do that. But let's keep our eye on Jesus. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Here the disciples were in the boat without Jesus. They were attempting to cross over to the other side, but were not making much progress because the boat was, quote, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. And we feel like that many times. During the fourth watch or in the middle of the night, closer to morning than midnight, you know, the old saying, it's darkest right before the dawn. The disciples see someone walking on the water and they are terrified. That ghost, they said. But immediately Jesus said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Then Peter, being the bold one, <laughs> said, let me come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. So who are you willing to abandon your boat for? Who are you willing to give up your peace for? The government? The disease? Or does Jesus keep us peaceful? You notice what happened immediately once Jesus reached out and pulled Peter up out of the waves? They got into the boat. And the boat continued on with Jesus successful. So who's in your boat today? We're in the middle of very different times. In just two short weeks, our world went from peace and politics. All you heard about was the election, how terrible this guy is or how good that guy is, to near martial law and panic. As a people of God, I say, we remember who we have in our boat, what God has promised. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Psalms 34.4-7 says this, I sought the Lord, he answered me. He delivered me from my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, the Lord heard him, and he saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around our, camps around all of us who fear him. And he delivers them. Psalms 23, our favorite psalm. Verse 4 says, Even though I walk in the darkest valley, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. Thy rod and your staff, they comfort me. In closing, I want to read from 1 Peter 5, verse 6 through 11. And it says this. 1 Peter 5, verse 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. 
Cast all your anxiety on him, for he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand first to firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are un undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. And I just want to say this. If you're feeling lonely, call us. If you crave social interaction in our social isolation, or if you have unmet needs, reach out to us. I know your Deacon Board stands ready to assist us and assist you at any time. Your church family is still that. Your family. Remember whom you have in your boat. Remember for whom it is worth abandoning the boat. Please stay safe. Wash your hands and trust our God. Thank you and God bless. Let's say a word of prayer. Our Father God, we come to you in these unusual circumstances, knowing that we serve an uncommon God in uncommon terms. We appreciate very much that wherever our boat is sailing, on whatever sea, you're in it. And if we're rowing the wrong boat, we know that you are the one worthy of abandoning that boat for. Go with us now. Bless each and every one of us wherever we are. And may the God of peace make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Amen.